Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and today we're going to talk about direct return versus reverse return piping. Now we don't get too involved with plumbing and the building's piping at Titus, but the topic of reverse return piping came up several times in the last couple of weeks, so I thought I would do a quick podcast on it. In a two pipe system, you have two main pipes one to supply water from the boiler or chiller, and another to return water to the boiler or chiller. There are two ways to lay the system out, direct return and reverse return. In a direct return system, the return piping takes the shortest path back to the chiller or boiler. It looks kind of like this. So let's say you have three hydronic units. Maybe they're fan coils, maybe they're chilled beams. And your supply is coming in over here. So it'll go from the first unit to the second to the third. In a direct return system, the return takes the shortest path back. So from this last unit, it would go all the way through there. And the second and the first would be here. So now what you can see Let's label these one, two, three. So what you see is that in this first unit, it has the shortest supply path and the shortest return path. And in the last unit, you've got the longest supply path and the longest return path. So looking at this, you can see that the loss going through the first unit, through the supply and up into the return, is gonna be the lowest. So during low flow conditions, most of the water will want to go through the first unit. In reverse return piping, the losses from the supply through the unit and out the return are balanced through the three units. So let's draw our three units again, and then let's have our supply that looks the same as it did before, coming in for, through the first unit to the second to the third. But your return looks like this. So the first unit's return goes the longest, then the second, then the third. So now you can see that the first unit has the shortest supply path, but the longest return path. And the last unit has the longest supply path, but the shortest return path. Let me move this up just a little bit. Okay, so with reverse return, it's an inherently balanced system. All three units have essentially the same flow regardless of flow conditions, so you have more even flow through all the units. You can see that the reverse return has a longer path, so the direct return will have less piping, which will reduce your first cost. But the benefits of having the inherently balanced system can outweigh the additional cost of the extra piping, so you need to do a complete cost analysis. So that's the difference between direct return and reverse return. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking a time out with us.